rim brakes. Can rim brakes handle the loose stuff, single track? I mean, look, rim brakes, that's how powerful they are. Going along and two fingers. Two fingers, bike just, the V brakes, rim brakes for the win. You need disc? Yeah, sure. Who knows anymore? Rim brake, disc brake, whatever you choose. Rim brake's definitely simpler, cheaper to operate, but you gotta clean your rims and clean your brake pads a lot. Disc brake's more set it, forget it. Wider tires, you know, once in a while, straighten a bent rotor, and that's pretty much it. Lead the brakes every, I don't know, some people say every year. I've gone five years without bleeding the brakes and totally fine. But even if you do have to do it, it's not, not a big job. Not a big job at all. Nothing compares to the mess that is tubeless tires. Tubeless is the worst. Takes the longest, most frustrating. Hydro disc is much easier to live with than that. So yeah. Rim versus disc, it's up to you. Check out Reginald Scott's video on rim brakes. He did a really good job on it, talking about a lot of pros to rim brakes and it really has me rethinking, you know. Rim brakes are all you need. Of course, I'm on rim brakes right now and I'm doing fine, totally fine. But as you saw in the beginning of this video, there's not a lot of tire clearance if you want to go really wide, like 45, 50 millimeters. You're either stuck with cantilever brakes, which are a big pain, more than, more than anything, or the mini V brakes, which are very powerful, very good, but you know, you can't really run anything wider than 40 millimeters. And then there's also mechanical disc. I think that's something that's very overlooked. You throw on a pair of compressionless inner cables, like I have in this bike, the brake cables. You know, brake cables like this. Get a pair of dual pivot or a dual piston, dual piston, what's it called? Disc calipers. And I think you're gonna get pretty close to the power of hydraulics. Of course, you gotta keep your rotors clean and choose the right pads, but you know, a lot of the issues people are having with disc brakes comes down to the hydraulics. And I'll admit, I have to keep a separate bleed kit for my disc brake bikes and it's messier. It just requires more where a cable actuated brake, rim or disc, you just need a pair of cutters, an Allen key, and that's it. Super simple. No fluid leaking anywhere. Now hydraulics definitely feel more luxurious, don't get me wrong. But I think we all as consumers in the bike industry, we're overlooking that cable actuated disc brakes can actually solve a lot of the headaches that hydraulics can. Again, I've never used cables for disc. I'd like to try them. I know the Surly Straggler, which comes in a similar color as this, has cable disc brakes, and that's a pretty sweet bike, honestly. SRAM mechanical, one by 11 cables routed like this on the outside, so you don't have to deal with any type of, any type of uh, internal routing when you're replacing the gear cables. Again, another headache that the bike industry created. Now they want to sell us a solution in the form of electric shifting. Floating through the sand. Um, and yeah, like, you know, one by 11, it's all you need. Cable actuated discs. Someday I'd like to try one of those. It might be a happy medium because there's no denying disc is, disc is definitely nicer than rim, but for the road, Reginald was talking about the wind space and how they're really good for the road. 
or they're really good in the rain. And that's actually pretty cool. If you can make rim calipers, like the Textros that came in my Wabi, if they can fit 32 millimeter tires, there's really no reason for disc anymore. Sure, there's always a nice to have. Actually, want to try over here. Always going to be a nice to have, and I like my disc brakes, but you can't deny that if you're trying to go simple. You're trying to go with a simpler system. This rim brakes. I said, check out his video. I've uh, it's he's got me rethinking the rim brakes, and I've got to say, I've got a giant TCR disc brake bike that can only fit a 30 millimeter tire. And when you have a bike that, like the Trek Imanda, I don't know if there's, I think they discontinued it, but on Trek's website, the disc brake model can only fit 28 millimeter wide tires. What's the point of having disc brakes then? If you can fit a 32 mil tire with the disc brakes or 35, now it starts to make sense. Because then you don't have to worry about the rim, the rim brake clearing all the mud, but you know, of course V brakes work, but the industry has abandoned disc brakes, uh, abandoned rim brakes. But uh, it'd be nice if they brought them back, honestly. Give us consumers a bit more choice, because uh, if you're going to have one bike to do everything, I personally, geez, I personally feel that disc brakes are the smarter choice because you can do more with them. Yeah, it's more maintenance. Yeah, it's more maintenance. Yeah, it's a little bit more, a little bit more money up front and to operate. But you know, you you just have one bike that does both road and gravel. You don't have to worry about rim material. You don't have to worry about the, the rim brake clearances. But having two or three bikes, just having one dedicated road bike. And brakes are all you need. There's no reason to have two, three, four bikes with the uh, very, um, very complicated disc brake system. See, Mini V brakes, very, very powerful. Very powerful. 